Also this afternoon, mixed reactions continue to greet President Akufuando's decision to revoke the appointment of Sarah Aja Safo. The president did not give the reasons for his decision, but it's no secret now that um, Sarah Aja Safo herself has not been at post for a while. The president, in announcing the decision yesterday, gave further directives on how the gender ministry will be run. So let's bring you excerpts uh, of that statement uh, from the presidency on uh, reasons uh, accounting at least uh, for the decision to dismiss her and further decisions uh, that will uh, be taken regarding the gender um, ministry. We'll bring that to you shortly and also tell you what Ghanaians have been saying on social media regarding her dismissal. But a couple of months ago, as we do know, we got in touch with Sarah Ajasafo and she promised us that she'll resume work once she arrives in Ghana. She has also been explaining reasons why she's not been opposed. I will be returning definitely to serve my people. I lead and serve the people of Domi Kwabinya. And I've done that for the past 12 years and I know exactly what my responsibilities are. And I'm definitely gonna do that. But as you know, my son is unwell and he has to transition to school and as a mother, I have to ensure that all that is settled before I can resume my duties. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So going by what you're telling me now, it's practically impossible that we may even see you by the end of the month. With God, everything is possible. We've been praying. I've been doing a lot to support my, my children, which I'm required to do by law. And um, as you know, they're in a foreign land and I have to comply with whatever I'm directed to. And until all that is sorted out, um, I have to do what I have to do and then I'll return to my duties. So we have as to rule out, we have to rule out next minister. week. So we have to rule out next week. You may not return next week. If I'm served and I... I look at the condition and the circumstances right here, and I'm able to, why not? But I've not been served earlier, I told you that. Mm. So let's go into the and conversation. And I know the rules. Right. And right. I'm, I'm, I've been a practicing lawyer for 18 years, and I don't have to be served through joy in news. And I don't have to be served through a third party. And as we speak now, I don't think I've received any such um, communication or service from Parliament, and that's why I'm still here. Mm. Uh, but but this controversy goes beyond your absence in parliament. In fact, there's a lot of um, reaction from even party members. You're a member of the New Patriotic Party. A lot has happened, and I'm sure that you've been monitoring all of the developments as well. But here's the opportunity for us to know your side of the story. We've heard from your party. We've heard from your colleagues in parliament as well. What's the Ajoa Safo story? <laughs> the Ajoa Safo story is exactly what I've told you about, and that's what... Um, communication I have sent to His Excellency the President and he's very much aware of what is happening to me and my family. And um, that's what I expect every Ghanaian to understand, that I am not intentionally abandoning my duties and my responsibilities. I have served the people of Ghana for 12 years. I entered politics when I was young and I have done it. And there has not been any past record of me absenting myself like this. That should tell people that there's really something that ought to be done with family. And I know that you will put family first. So um, they should all start praying and keep praying for us. And I know with God, everything is possible and we're gonna pull through it. I mean, everybody obviously would put family first, but that wasn't the narrative, even from um, the likes of Kennedy at Japan, who we understand is very close to you. These are persons who went out publicly to state that it appears you were intentionally refusing to show up in parliament. In fact, they go on to give some chilling accounts of how, for instance, the chief of staff came to your office or your house just to personally plead with you to support your party. Why did you give up on the NPP? I haven't given up on my party. I am still very loyal and committed to the party and to His Excellency the President. And I have had a record of the 2012 election petition from Domi Fabinga. That is what landed all of us in power today. 
and I will be the last person to put um, that fight, that courage, and that record that I fought for uh, into this repute at this time. So I'm not going to respond to third parties, what they think and what their opinions are, but I want everybody to listen to me. And what I'm saying is that I am still committed to the party. I'm still committed to the government, and I'm still committed to His Excellency the President and his family. I mean, you are a politician, so you understand the importance of public opinion, uh, the opinion of the delegates. Uh, in fact, your constituents also matter. So your narrative is also crucial. We've heard, for instance, that arrangements were made to you in the wake of the consideration of the E levy, for instance, for you to appear in Parliament. Some tickets were, were flown out to you just to try as much as possible to get you to add to the numbers. You didn't, of course, um, listen to the leadership of your party, and they are beginning to get worried. <laughs> I debank all that, allegations, and you know, they say silence is golden, because when people throw in stuff at you that are not true, and you respond immediately, you don't make sense to the people. And that is why I've kept quiet all these, I mean, these days and months, listening to what everybody got to say. But what I know and what I'm telling the people of Ghana is that I had issues with family that I had to take care of. And that's exactly why I had to stay back. Mm, I and, when I had to come, and when I had to come, I did come. And when it was out of my hands that I couldn't do anything about it, I couldn't make it. And that's what it is. You're talking about the fact that the president is well aware of your condition. Is that possibly why he's keeping you at post as gender minister? Some have argued that by now you should have lost your job. That is their opinion. The prerogative lies in the president, and he knows exactly what I am capable of doing what I've done for the party, what I've done for parliament, and he knows that I won't intentionally abandon my duties if I had no just reasons. And he won't allow me to stay for the family if he didn't know exactly what was happening. So, so what do you suspect then could, could be the motive of, for instance, uh, very high profile <laughs> persons within the NPP? For instance, you have the general secretary of your political party uh, for instance, coming out publicly to say the NPP was considering at some point relieving you of the party ticket and declaring your seat vacant. You've had John Boydou say some of these words. How does that come to you and what do you believe may be the motive of your general secretary? I cannot speak to people's motives. What I can speak to is what I know. And what I know is I have been on the party's ticket for the people of Domi Fadina. And I have given the highest votes to the party. And I'm the first woman to lead and I have led. And my words and my footprints are there for everybody to see. And if I have to take time off at this crucial time, and I have done, I believe that the reasonable people would understand. And I believe he's reasonable as well. Mm. And we know that definitely, as you're indicating to us, you will return. But then the question about resuming your role as gender minister. We know there's a caretaker minister as we speak uh, acting in your stead. Will you take up the post immediately you return? Or perhaps <laughs> you are considering resigning from post? <laughs> that is what you're expecting or that's what other people are expecting? Um, well, it's all about you in the end because you say the president is well aware. So. What will you do? Exactly. Will, you, will you take up the post once you return? And since I haven't resigned, it's implied that exactly what you're saying is the truth. When I touch down, I am going to do what I have to do as a minister since I haven't been relieved of my post yet. So why are you failing to give the people of Ghana and your constituents the exact date that you'll return to this country? A lot of people are anxious waiting to see well, she says she will come back, but she's not showing up anytime soon. When is Sarah Jassa for returning? She's going to return when issues with family are well sorted out. And that is not something that I can predict. And that is not something that is within my power. And there is a lot within um, the United States that I don't want to share. And we're talking about a child and we're talking about 
uh, medical stuff, mm. and I don't want to put it out there because even if you ask for it from the authorities here, they're not going to give it to you, and I'm not going to give it out in public. So everything is going to work out, and I'm going to come back and take my position. Mm. So whatever anybody is saying, I think uh, we are in a reorganization mood in a party. People have interest. People have motives. People have things that they want to do. But I don't want to be the center of that. And I'm concentrating on what I ask permission from the head of state, mm -hmm. the commander in chief, and the president of the republic that I'm going to do is right. exactly what I'm doing. Uh, and and uh, of course, I recall with joy when you came up on social media with your um, daughter sending that Easter message out there. You stated categorically that you were the member of parliament for Dom Kwabinya. That's what you said. But you were silent on whether or not you're still the gender minister. Uh, do you still consider yourself as gender minister of the Republic of Ghana? That is so petty. I didn't even know this. <laughs> because, um, you know, um, there's a difference in our, um, with government, the executive power and the parliamentary duty that I have. And at that time I had sent out things that I had to send out to the religious leaders in my constituency. And so that video definitely was for the constituents. And so I restrained myself to the people of Dome Padena and as the president of the Republic, he will wish the whole country. So that's the difference. And that's the reason why you, <laughs> you didn't yeah, hear me mention. Right. But but even the seat that you hold, the Dominic Kovina <laughs> seat, is under siege, as some are describing it. You are indicating to us that at least you've not been served. Uh, the committee may go ahead and pass whatever sanction it is that they intend to do. Are you not worried that you may lose the Dom Kobinya seat, particularly as the Speaker of Parliament, who even belongs to another political party, could simply go ahead and say you've breached the 15-day rule and then go ahead to declare your seat as vacant? I am not worried because I am very, very prayerful and I don't believe only in the physical. I also believe in the spiritual. And I know my Lord knows exactly why I am not there and he's going to fight my battle. So um, as we say, and I've always said, the battle is still the Lord's, and the Lord is going to fight my battle. I'm not worried at all. As steps of the interview then, scores of Ghanaians have been reacting to that decision by the president. The president did not really give reasons for uh, his decision uh, to dismiss the minister, but uh, obviously you do know that she's been away for a while. Uh, there are even further directives that the president is giving. We'll give that to you shortly. But first, let's take some of the comments uh, coming through um, in that regard. Emmanuel Upokubwedu says, that's a good decision uh, from the president. There's also a Kwisi Emmanuel who says, not at all. Uh, this shouldn't even uh, end there. Her emolument must also cease coming uh, with uh, pampered hair enough. She must be dearly uh, for her unconcerned action. So that's the thought of uh, Emmanuel Akwesi on this. Then we also have Francis Nanaupoku who says it's not enough um, for that to happen. She should be removed as member of parliament uh, from her constituency too. Very harsh words in the ending there, uh, ending parts of the message there, so we'll not be able to take that. Then uh, there's also Jerry uh, who says that the Saka himself uh, should be sacked. So he's talking about the president. Um, he's the biggest problem we have as a nation. Uh, there's also Kinsley, uh, Mamlia J. Um, of course, Kinsley says that she has withdrawn more salaries without work. So can a poor teacher do the same in Ghana? No, we are living in an animal kingdom. That's the uh, thoughts. Uh, some of you have been sharing on social media. Let's bring you that statement from the presidency communicating uh, the decision to dismiss her. There are further directives um, on that statement, um, some portions talking about what the future holds for the gender ministry itself. Um, for now, we understand that the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Madame Cecilia Benadapa, uh, will continue to act as the caretaker minister for the Ministry of Gender Social Protection until such a time. So it's not clear really now um, when the president will make that decision, but the statement is saying that until such a time that President Akufado appoints a substantive minister, 
it appears that what won't happen is that we'll have the uh, sanitation minister retained um, as the caretaker minister for gender and social protection. Well, it appears that this problem uh, goes beyond Sarah Ajasa for herself because according to parliamentary watchdog Odikro, its analysis found out that some 33 more MPs should have faced the same fate uh, which Sarah Ajasafu is now facing. Uh, let's bring you uh, that list uh, which um, Odikro published earlier, putting out some 30 uh, MPs. Uh, they talk about Sarah Ajwasa for herself, the Domi Kwabinya MP uh, in Kennedy, Japan, as well as Henry Kwate, who happens to be the um, Greater Accra Regional Minister. But beyond that as well, they are putting out a list of some 33 MPs in all, assigned the three others who are referred to the Privileges uh, Committee. And there you have it, um, portions uh, indicating a genuine voting uh, as well. You have uh, Joe Gatte there, Ajiman Menu uh, who happens to be the Doma Central MP and also Health Minister. The Information Minister, Kojo Oponkruma, as well as featuring there, uh, having missed some 25 seatings without permission. Uh, and uh, the list goes on and on, including the Employment and uh, Labor Relations Ministry. For those of you who are still interested in that list, you have Kesel Atoforsen as well, meeting, uh, missing some 18 days. Uh, he is uh, the ranking on the Foreign Affairs, uh, the Finance Committee in Parliament. Derry Ambrose, who happens to be our Interior Minister, has been busy as well. Uh, it appears that he's missed out on 20 seatings in the House. The Education Minister has not been left out as well. 21 days um, off from the House. And Mahama Farouk Umar Aliu is also their MP for Yendi, missing some 20 days. There's John Pitamo, who happens to be the Railways Minister, the uh, only sit in the Volta region belonging to the New Patriotic Party. That MP has also gone just a day past the uh, mandatory 15 days. So you have John Pitamo missing in Parliament for 16 sitting days. And uh, uh, you can see some more names uh, there, Gifti Chum Ampofu as well, uh, 17 days missing in Parliament. And uh, of course, the list goes on and on. But the point of Odikro is that all of these 33 others or 30 others have to be held uh, before the Privileges Committee. Well, I've been speaking to uh, the Director of Special uh, Programs at um, Odikro, Kina Likimani, who says that the issue of absenteeism has become chronic in Parliament. I have no, um, we, we can only hope that in fact the seat um, is declared vacant, but I have no idea what the speaker is uh, is going to say or what you know what this. I I, I don't want to say it's a delay tactic. I I assume they've reached some kind of procedural thing they need to sort out. But um, it's clear. It, it's 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 clear because um, um, even uh, being given an opportunity to address the committee was extended and um, she did not and she did not hasn't provided officially to parliament an explanation so i um, it is clear so but we also think that a separate um a procedure should be put in place for the other 30 i suppose 29 because yeah um the, the other mps on the list the 29 or so on the list um, to, to appear before the Privileges Committee to um, explain themselves. We well, and uh, some MPs as well have been reacting to this. Indeed, all those people uh, are actually absent for more than 15 sitting days of Parliament. Mm -hmm. The proper thing that would happen would be that they might be referred to the Privileges Committee, but that will be done only when those information have been properly brought to the... Uh, I mean, he needs to be able to show us um, how he got those words. I mean, clearly, I've not seen the document, and I'm yet to assess the document. But however, of course, if it's what he's saying, it's part of course, it's, it's for the speaker to take decision on it. And so, clearly, when if, if the speaker saw that there's a need for him to do such referrals, he did. So I'm, I'm confident that if what the decree is right, the speaker will look at it. But I don't think it's factually accurate. But uh, some names have been banded around in there that I feel they've been coming to the chamber on a regular basis. Uh, well, it is good that whatever work that we are doing in Parliament, there is somebody watching us. 
So if this is a true reflection, the vote and proceedings of the House would confirm that at the city, that is the imperative. Those alleged names have absented themselves. Mm -hmm. Then becomes a matter of privileges. Then the jurisdiction of the privileges committee would then be invoked. Then the privileges committee is enjoined by law to listen to them, and it is incumbent upon them to justify the reason for their absence from parliament. Mm -hmm. Going through the list, I realize that some are members of parliament at the same time, ministers of state. So having regard to their schedule, they may have a justifiable reason why they have absented themselves for a continuous period of 15 days. But the issue is, in circumstances of that nature, you ought to have obtained the written permission of the speaker. As to whether they have obtained the written permission of the speaker before undertaking whatever work that has taken them out of parliament for a continuous period of 15 days is also a matter for the committee. Well, so some reactions there uh, from the members of parliament who have been reacting to the latest report from Odipo.